Is now added to the comp, as it will be. It looks like here the Viego pick once again. Question is, where does it go? Pretty solid matchup into Lee Sin on the top side of the map, so that's what I would expect. But we don't know if Lee Sin is in fact going to be top yet either. As they were yeah. talking about last week on the cast, kind of like a in-person poke champ, right? You just <laughs> throw <laughs> yeah. your body into them and you yeah, just yeah. smash a bunch of AP damage into them and. Yeah, you know, it's you just hop immediately back, and it's basically just poke because you don't yeah. have to. And uh, maybe we'll see it a little bit in this game as we're considering diving the top lane. Hoya has flash and should have his dash. He's going to go north, though, and take a bunch of damage. Tries to turn it on to Clid. That is going to be first blood going the way of Rascal, though. So it's a one for one, but Rascal should be pretty happy about it. Yep. First blood, pretty massive here. Deny all this CS and yeah. all the XP. Looks like a completely different story. BDD will be kind of chain stunned and won't actually get to use his flash until it's too late. Gonna steal this blue at least. However, uh, yeah, he has to flash and kick, but he's burning down. He's gonna try to get over the wall here, and he will have the cooldown. The follow up not quite there as the rumble also. Okay, here we go. Here's the follow up. They're gonna be able to just alley oop that one over to Ruler as he will pick up another kill. The Genji are just so great at setting Ruler up for success. It's unbelievable in these moments, too. Life and, and Ruler are, I mean, I think that these two players should just play together forever. <laughs> uh, they just, <laughs> they understand each other so well. They know how to, to empower each other so well. It's an easy call for Life to, to use Flash there. You know, he had the advantage. Flash was used for Delight earlier. There's just no way to shut that down. And now we're going to see a big rotation. Yeah, they're not gone, but we do have a teleport coming on in. That is a really nice equalizer. They're trying to take out the light before this fight even begins. Henna flashes back onto the equalizer, and Lava can't do anything, and he nearly dies jumping back in there. But BDD will get traded back. A really nice look. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> All right, here we go. BDD is actually going to get a really nice engage. Ooh. As the Equalizer comes in, Let's he's burning. That is going to be the alley-oop this time to Clid. Like you said, but has it available here for this next follow-up? Uh, okay, Lava. This wasn't it. It was not <laughs> it. It's not impossible, like you say, for Fred of Breon to come back and win this, but this is definitely not going to help. All right, trying However. to get on top of Rascal, and he has so much sustain, it's ridiculous. Here comes the follow-up. Henna is so out of position, so deep in there. And now Zen is just going to laugh at them as Hoya over the wall. He will survive for now, as he just barely will not burn down. And that's just lucky for them, as they will get out of there, thinking they were the ones engaging. But now Gen G at 20 minutes and a half. They're the ones going. I'm not sure about life here. Yeah, a little bit a little bit over the edge here, but he'll be fine. I yep. can't believe Baron thought that was the real one. That was clearly the clone. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, the Genji are actually going to look to take this. Delight's here. Yeah, they have really awesome turn as well. Lava is trying to poke, but it's still going to be a very clean Baron. Can they get out of this one alive? That is a massive cast, but again, Stopwatch is there. But you don't have that follow-up damage after the after your Kaisa's dead. All right, Lava. This is what the LeBanc can do. I mean, you mentioned it. If Ruler gets caught, I mean, that's one way back in. And he is really far behind the fight. The rest of his team, though, very scary. Could take this down. They're trying to burst him, and he will get the Smite Steal. And it doesn't matter if Ruler wasn't there. He just true shot barrages, and the rest of his team cleans up. Gen G are just stomping yet another team. And it's not particularly close. Certainly not, not in this first game. And it's hard to point fingers at Fred Brion in, in any particular place. The Kaisa pick ended up being, you know, one of the weaker parts of this. The Viego dominated the top lane matchup. Lava. All right, Lava. Well, goodbye. He's, he's trying. <laughs> he, 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 you know, he, he, yeah. to, to just rush it down. So Gen G immediately pull him out of position first, and then they go for the dragon. And if they, if that true sharp barrage actually stops backs, so they get an inhibitor too. <laughs> All right, let's see it, Umti. Oh, you're spotted. And now they're going to get over the wall. The equalizer comes in. As we have a 1v2, Rascal really getting in there. He's going to pick up one. He could probably just go 1v3, although. He's like, wait, Henna's not fed. I regret this. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, that's it. No way, no way, no way. No, he is. Oh, He's my God. still in there. The damage isn't enough, and neither is the barrel. Thankfully, Delight had Flash, otherwise that was going to be a 1-3. <laughs> oh, Rascal. That's why you play Viego, I guess. Live it up to your name, Rascal. Oh, 
the Infernal, or rather the Elder Drake is not taken, but it just doesn't matter because they've got a bigger prize in sight on the Nexus here. This game has been, you know, over for quite some time now, but Gen.G are going to put the final nail in the coffin here. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, Hoya's trying to get in there, BDD extending all the way down. And Gen.G, they're not going to go down without at least getting more damage, more kills. They want to stack those stats, and that they will. Good. And a lot of that is in the later games. A lot of it was in lane two, but like, this was uh, one of our best Viego games we've had, actually. And yes, it was a one-sided game, so he will look better as a result, but... Yeah, I mean, it really... Mess up a lot of what Fred Brown's going to be looking for in these later game team fights. Lava gets his Orianna as the final pick here. One that he has been very good at. His best control mage right now in this meta. But Genji have the ability to delete an Orianna so quickly. And even with the Lantern for protection for Aphelios, play. it is the only style they play. It's their best style. <laughs> this is Genji in a nutshell. A lot of yeah. Like, he, you know. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, it's a lot of stuff given over. That doesn't mean that automatically Genji wins. It's just a little bit unfortunate at times. We'll have to wait and see how this early game does go. Oh, this is really well-timed fear. Meganar comes out, but Ras has already done the damage he needs. Nice little trade there, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Pretty one-sided. Conquer, proc, Toya just has to sit back and wait. Oh, sad times. Uh, he actually might just go for it. Oh. Okay, the flash comes in, and the hop, the fear is here. A couple of autos will do it. He doesn't even care if he dies. He already did the damage. All of this wave will go into the dust. Yep, it's way more impactful that this is actually going to go down. Get teleport right back in. <laughs> Get down, Mr. President! Yeah, I wanted to say it. <laughs> All right, well, the bot lane has not been looking good for Gen.G until this moment. They were getting pushed under turret. They had lost two plates. There were zero wards in the river as they were there. The lane had reset and they felt safe, but they are not safe against Clid's Bola Bear. And this is like Shock Pikachu once again. It's like, <laughs> oh, you mean Clid can just can just gank us like this? Yep. How yeah, is this possible? That is what he does. Uh, he does not farm the jungle. He farms the players. Yeah. Um, I know I've been saying that a lot. It's not like a broken record. But Rascal, meanwhile, is going to try to really bait this out. Okay, but the damage is there. And we'll see, you know, how this works, because Umpty is also coming up here. But it might just be a, enough damage. Let's see the second R will come in. Dodge on that one. He actually sees Umpty. Shuriken's going to land. The Dragon Kick is available, and Umpty says, I don't know if you want a piece of this. More time this game, trades back two kills. Only a little bit down on minions. He's the target now. Trying to get on top of the Gnar, but he hops on top of the turret away from the Gnar. They have enough damage, though, and Umpty again. He's just not really able to do anything at this point in time. He doesn't have enough damage and yeah, doesn't have his, uh, you know, first item up either. As BD. Right. Oh, he's going to land that shuriken. And here we go. Easy peasy. Not even a thought in the world. BD doesn't even have to use flash. Even though the shockwave kept him there, it doesn't matter. BD's getting a lot of golf claps uh, from the crowd today. <laughs> We've seen this before. As this time around, Rascal is a bit more tanky, but he is being kited out very nicely here as the Flash does have to come in, but the Flash here is easy pickings for Hoya. That is a second double, or solo kill. Trying to clear out the vision. Trying to threaten here. I actually like how much uh, Umpty and crew were able to delay this. Meanwhile, this is still going on, but you gotta remember that Hoya, I mean, he's got to play the steel caps as well. It's not a, not a simple pressure move here from the Nocturne. You really do have to be careful. Umpty really like the angle here. Oh, Umpty, he's going to be knocked up and charmed as there it is. He goes down immediately. BDD is here in the shroud and will be able to ult away. And now it's 5v4. That's the Rift Herald picked up here for the side of Gen G as well. Umpty cannot drop the ball this time. Okay, he's looking for some kind of engage, but he's away from his team. And look at that. How is Hena supposed to play these team fights? You tell me, big Nara the wall, though, as Hoya is desperately trying to carry this game. But BDD is still alive, still looking for Rascal here. He's going to land that shuriken. Hoya and Umpty still around. He's going to leave Rascal to die. Triple kill to BDD, who is now 6-0. But Freda Prion 
will be able to take the fight. They're looking for the Drake as well. They're going to get the Drake, the third in a row here. Yeah. This is where, you, if you find him, you can punish his Umpty. But Umpty's not checking for that. He's like, oh, that's BDD. I don't know if I want to queue on that. He's oh, he's going. going. He's going. He's going to push him away. But I don't know if you can really have the confidence to move in right now. Another ward of instantly drunk Here we out. go. This is what we're looking for. They're trying to get on top of the Nar this time. And the follow-up should be there as they will dump down. And in goes BDD into that back line as the Zonius will buy time. But Henna, he's got a full health bar. He's trying to kite it out. 1v5. He gets over the wall. A fantastic lantern. Yeah, I don't know if Gen.G can actually turn and, and actually do this now. Their health bars are so low. But Fred and Brion have to respond. Now, they're going to look for a Cloud Soul, maybe trade here. But I don't think that's going to be worth it. I mean, everybody's so low on the side of Gen.G. You already used your Moonlight Vigil, though, so you, it's hard for you to come in. You don't have the Shockwave. So I guess but Umpty played that really, really long extended wait. Fails to get the kill. And, I mean, that was one of your chances to really get a pick before the upcoming objective. They're going to be able to stop this Baron buff from really doing a whole lot. The composition of Gen.G does not have amazing wave clear or pushing power. You know, Siege. So... It's, it's not great when nobody's dead, so not a huge uh -oh. advantage. Well, somebody's going to get caught out, and it's going to be Lava. Oh, no. He had Flash. The kick comes through. This is what this comp does, especially with the Rakan follow-up. But they're kiting it out pretty well. Henna does have some pretty insane damage at this point in time, and that's why there's always that little nag. And what is a very, very difficult game here against Gen.G. They're now really behind. Now, it's going to come down to this fight. I mean, if, if Gen.G get Elder at this point in the game, it's they all might over. just run away with it. But if Bro can hold on by any circumstance, we're looking at post 30 minutes with this composition. They're going to back away. In goes the engage. It's not that clean from Gen.G. As the damage comes in, there is the Wabo combo. But BDD, he's trying to get on top of Henna. But he's going to go into the stopwatch. It's and that is enough. That is enough for Fred and Brion to stay alive. And now they're looking at the Elder. They're looking at the Elder. This is the play you needed at the end of the fight, too. Umpty is, is tracking down life. He's got him caught. He has no flash. There's no way out. He stopwatches, but he can't escape. Now he's lost his stopwatch. And it's going to be a free Elder here after the fight. No contest. We're going to see a reset, it looks like. But the Baron timer here is actually perfect for Gen G. Fred and Brion realized this. It could be a trade. They're going to come over and check, but the damage is so high at this point for Gen G. It's going to be really difficult to stop this. Well, they got the vision. There's no Meganar, but he's going to try to get in there anyway. But the Baron will go to the smite. Now they're going to get out. To... Then it might just be lights out, you know. Even, even though it might be scary for Gen G fans, for the Gen G players, that, oh no, like, Lava and Delight, they're, or Lava and Henna, rather, they're just kind of getting out of control right now, scaling to new heights. What can we do? But, you know, at the same time, you've got somebody out of position and maybe you can get something going. Now, Ruler in his spot here, he's going to try to flash away, and I don't think there's any escape for him. He goes back that could into be a, that one. That could be a game losing moment. That Ruler is caught like this. He's alone. He's out there. He thinks he can escape, but he absolutely cannot. Ends up wasting his flash, too. I mean, you have cleanse, you have flash, you feel like you can do anything, but Ruler has been caught in these moments so many times. Doesn't matter what league it is, doesn't matter what tournament, and that might actually just be the game. Unbelievable, he's caught. Let's see. The 5v4, the Wombo Combo's here. We got the ultimates available. There's the hook on a BDD, and he can't do anything as Life is desperately trying to get in there, but it is not going to work out for him. As Clint is going to ultimate away, Umpty takes a ton of damage from the turret. They need minions to come on in here. Rascal on the back trying to prevent that from happening. Oh, they're just trying to burst it down. I don't know about this. Hoya's this trying crazy. to tank it up, but we got 10 seconds until Ruler. We'll see if they can stop it, but no, it looks like they will be able to as the Nexus will go down, and we will have a third game. Fred at Breon with a the Golden Snitch. I, I guess that maybe that's Ruler's new nickname because we've seen that many times before. It all really came down to that. I guess 35 minutes in, catch the... We see this one return, and we will see BDD's Syndra and it's actually his second time this season. Uh, he's the only one who's playing it right now. It works really well with the CC setups that they have. Uh, and you can also, of course, use the Scatter of the Week to set up for a Volley Bear gank. You can chain CC that together. You can roam to the top side of the map, do the same thing with Lee Sin. She's going to be very powerful through all stages of the game and in the late, late game. Get the Tom Kent zoom in. <laughs> I'm starting to get a little nervous. Yeah. But we're in. He always makes me a little bit nervous. Game three. This time around. And yeah, I mean, from the side of Gen G, in the last game, they just wanted to jump 
right on top of you with all five members. Um, everybody. Uh, he's coming up now. Flash almost available. Just going to use the ult to get him away. And Fred and Breon, I mean, they're not aggressively positioning to truly fight over this objective right now. Umpty just used his ultimate, and they're going to spot him, and Hoya has no idea. This is unfortunate for him. In goes the Lee Sin as First Blood will come down. Yeah. This guy, I, I feel like they still haven't really figured out. As the kick comes in, Rascal just going to flash and take the life of Hoya, who does not flash away from that one. And this is, you, you've got to do something against Predator Breon now because the top side of the map is completely controlled by Gen G. His mains are crashing. You have to trade something. You have to look for this Drake fight. Umpty is not part of this fight at all, so no smite available. Lava's in position. Oh, he's going to get over with the Lantern, though. And here we go. The Meganar into the wall, but the spike goes the way of Clid. As Hoya now trying to front line, and they are going to find Clid. In goes the Lee Zin, looking for the kick, and he will get a huge shockwave. Comes into that back line, but Ruler will survive. And the front line of Gen G is just too far ahead. Look at Rascal go. This guy is a monster in this game. It's just so late that it almost is able to execute a few targets, but it does not happen. I'm going to go back in time here and watch this fight. Just a really easy chase for Rascal. It's the follow-up. Yep. He has safeguard to do the ward hop, look for the E for the execution, and that is all it takes. He walks back into this fight here. And Hoya is he's looking for the perfectly timed R bar. The choke point here is a bit of a problem for Gen G, but it's just like you said, the front line is way too strong. Rascal is five levels up on the light who's tagged here. Now he's on the back side of this fight. Even though Hoya's in the choke where he wants to be. The Devourer means that he can't get on top of Ruler. So that's when things start to fall apart here. Yes, they do trade back and kill, and you do see that Umpty can come in and do quite a bit of damage, but Rascal just can <laughs> He can jump to anybody. They can't kill him. Henna's like shelling all of his damage into this Lee Sin, and he ends the fight with 20% health. Oh, and now everybody's getting into it. There was not enough action early on. Trying to now get on top of Hannah, but Delight is so good at peeling for this AD carry. It's ridiculous. And Rascal has gone way too deep this time around. Yeah, it, it's funny uh, how Rascal giveth and Rascal taketh away. Um, in the last fight, he handled everything so well. It's going to be hyper carry against hyper carry eventually with some really good setup on both sides. As in goes Rascal again. Why? Gets rooted. Yeah, at least he has the stopwatch, but where is the safeguard? At least the flash devour has to be used to save him here. Slow's coming through. Can Fred Brian actually follow up on this? That's oh, the they're, question. They're going to have to get in there right now. But the damage is pretty huge. We're at 3,000 health. Teleport right on top of them. And they're going to have to kite back. Now you see Clint trying to get on in there. He wants it, but he will not get it. And Clint goes in, and the damage is coming out now from Hedda. As huge from BDD, at least, trying to get on top of him. Rulers desperately trying to get excited as the kick comes in from Rascal on the top side, and he will be able to isolate Henna, and that's all they really had to do. As Lava has a lot of health, but now he's all alone. Up against the two carries here on the side of Gen G. That's going to be enough damage to push them away, but still, a nice fight here from Gen G, but the Dragon, at least, did go into the pockets of Fred Apriam. Archangel finishes for Lava, that's why he teleports in. He does a ton of damage in the fight. The beginning of the fight looked tragic for Gen.G when Rascal engaged in, had to use his stopwatch, which he now will no longer have, and he won't be able to build his own or anything like that. So that is one huge tool lost for Gen.G going into the later parts of this game, but that without a better setup here, once that is gone. Yeah. Ruler is just keeping everybody at arm's length, and look at this, Rascal, he's so far ahead, another solo kill comes in. And he is just having the game. Oh. Gonna be so careful right now against yeah. this Lee Sin. All right, um, T, that's not it. it. This is this is also the power of the Syndra, right? Just calmly, kind of. Okay, well they're just trying to clear the waves right now. Shockwave. Yeah. And uh, oh. hate to see it, but you know this is one of those times. BDD was just waiting there over the wall with the orb. Like he's just waiting for anyone to jump over. BD quietly having a very strong game as well. Here Lava, we go. look at the positioning of that ball. It's really frustrating once again for Gen.G yep. to actually come in here. Trying to poke him away and push him back and get the ball out as the smite will go the way of Gen.G. That is Mountain Soul. 
Ackerman. Come around here from Rascal, trying to get on top of Hannah, but the flash comes in. We're just zooming in onto this. He's looking for the kill. The flash on in. Can he actually get it? The core drinker is enough to keep him alive to get the kill as everybody has to flash away from the scatter the week. That should be game. The shielding comes through. Oh, they're in there. Delight's definitely dead, and now Genji's on the chase. It's an angry bear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is such a one-sided game. After such a fantastic game, too, it was back and forth. There was a lot of tension, and sure, the snitch was caught in the end, but in this third and final game, Genji just run away with it, and we'll never know what a closer game could have looked like with these two drafts, the yeah. upgrade. And uh, the GA purchase was perfect, actually, because it allows him to just go in without any recourse, right? I mean, even if you kill him, he already did so much damage. He pushed Henna out of the fight, and there was not really much they could do to stop the Lee Sin. You can't really get away from him. Henna does with the Thresh, end all of your flashes and summers. Henna does not have ultimate for this defense. There's going to be a Shockwave. Genji have 30 seconds to Baron, so they don't actually have to push the issue here. They have a lot of minions, but only with a Jin Zhao dead. They're not going to risk losing the advantages they have here in the base. Or rather play for objective, back off. It's five minutes till the Elder Drake. Baron buff guarantees a lot of pressure on the Nexus and the final inhibitor. I'm going to watch back to this fight as just Clid is in such a good position to guarantee the smite. Like, you can't outsmite that very easily. They still look for the engage on top of him so they can't smite, but it doesn't work. And Rascal's at the back. Right, we're, we're only going to watch the same part of the fight that we watched last time. Who cares about what happens at the top side? Because Henna here is killed. And Rascal survives with the GA. That's a trade you'll take every time because now there's no damage whatsoever on a Fred Brion that has a depleting Narbar and a dead Thresh. Dead man walking. Sad times. <laughs> Sad Thresh. And we're even going to see this replay. As again, I mean, imagine playing Xin Zhao into this. <laughs> What can you do? The answer is nothing. Even he tries to ult and it just doesn't matter. Wind becomes a breeze. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Wind becomes a box fan. I don't know. <laughs> um, See, some of those are pretty strong. Yeah, no? actually quite stronger than Wind, in fact, in most cases. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not the best analogy, but, you know, it was a pretty flimsy Jin Zhao, sadly. had some good ones today, so, you know, you had to <laughs> balance it out a little bit. Okay, here we go. Trying to get on top of Ruler as the Devourer comes in, but he's able to flash away and get some space. The Narbar is here, so Gen Z are like, okay, guys, let's not throw it just yet. We have minions pushing super minions into the base, so they don't have to overdo it, but they do lose the flash here on Ruler. Nice. Flash, heal, and cleanse, but there's, no, there's not a lot they could do. Now, Lava does have teleport, but they can't group up here. They have to deal with the bot pressure. They have to deal with the top pressure. Uh -oh. Well, Omti is way out of ex <laughs> uh, I mean, that, yeah. that is... I mean, that's... <laughs> he got picked, okay? I don't know that what else is, to say. Like, yes, he, he, was, he was way too far out there, trying to control some of the vision, dies for it. There's no good decision here anymore for Fred Brion. Every, every choice is a losing one. They're 10,000 gold behind. I mean, Hannah doesn't have his ultimate, like, again, same situation. There it is. They get another pick. And now with the Jinx online and the amount of work that Rascal has done in this game, doesn't look like there's anything. There's another scout of the week, exactly what you said when we saw the draft. Comes to life before our eyes. And that's gonna do it, guys. Gen Z will pick up the win here tonight, two to one. Very dominant in a couple of the games, at least. As bro, we're able to put up their best effort, but Gen Z will remain undefeated here at the LCK. I mean, you know, it makes sense from the 280 carries in the 32-minute game. But, uh, yeah, Lee Sin.